You know, there are over 184 mascaras if you go to the Ulta website. So how do you know which one to choose? Well, I'm gonna start with one that I know works really well and we're gonna review it with Essence latest mascara drop. Hi everyone, I'm Jodi, welcome to my channel. I'm really glad that you're here today. If you are new, welcome. We are glad that you are here. I am 53 years old and I love all things beauty related, whether it's beauty news, beauty resources, new products, in makeup, hair care, skin care. I am constantly studying, researching, and reviewing products to make sure that I give you options from both cost-effective and luxury. And today is no different because it is a Friday face-off day, one of my favorite videos to do. I do one of these every other week where we test some of the most popular products in the market to decide which one well wears best ba -ba -ba, on my 53 year old combination skin. So it gives you some idea of how these products may work for you. Today, listen, I have, you know, we keep hearing about the economy, the economy, and the economy is in a very tight market, but more so is the cost of things. The inflation is really what has gotten me doing a lot of research for these Friday face-offs. And so today, we are talking about mascara. Last year, I reviewed the Lash Princess by Essence, and today, that one's back for a review. But we're going to review it with another Essence product because Essence has came out with their Lash Without Limits Extreme Lengthening and Volume Mascara. It's right here, and it is also $4.99. So if you're faced with a decision, you want a good mascara, they both say they lengthen, they both say they volume. So if you only wanna spend $5, and why spend more than that if you don't have to, which one is the right one for you? Is it the tried and true holy grail OG of lash mascaras? Or does this new Essence Lash Without Limits Extreme Length and Voluming Mascara, I'm not gonna say that the whole video, I promise. That's probably almost the last time. Anyway, which one is best for you? I definitely have thoughts. They are both on right now. So let's get into the review where I apply these right where you can see how they work and an eight hour wear test to see if there's any transferring and does the lifting and the volumizing remain in place? Let's get into it. All right. <laughs> You know, I don't know how long the big lash fad or trend has been in, but I kind of am digging it. I have seen pictures recently that would lead me to believe that the trend of big fluffy lashes or even lashes at all is diminishing and they're going back. They, who's they? I mean, we set our own trends depending on what you want to do. Anyway, the trendsetters, if you will, are going back to that eyeliner, less mascara look. And I gotta tell you, I don't think I'm going to embrace that. I love a, not necessarily flirty, but a nice fluffy lash to just give some, I think, size to my eyes. I think as I age, if I didn't wear mascara, my eyes would feel like they were this big. And the mascara just makes them feel larger. I don't know, what do you guys think? If there was a fad or a trend, and listen, I know many of you, my subscribers, we are Gen X. We don't really follow trends. We're not trendsetters. We're not into the latest makeup things. We just want to look good in our own unique way. So whether or not it's a trend or not, I know we don't really care, but let me know what you think. Do you like that mascara look or do you like the days where it was less emphasis on the lashes and more emphasis on the eyeliner itself and the, the definition of the eye? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, let's get into it. So number one, the Lash Prince. I shared with you guys before that whole is it lash lash tint lift and lash lash tint lash the lift and tint that many people are doing and I would definitely do it if I wasn't testing mascara for you guys or at least reviewing it so you can see how mascara really works but a lift and tint lifts your lashes and tints them like with a mascara look just less cakey as if your hair was really really dark the color of a mascara it looks beautiful it lasts for about six weeks the cost is anywhere from 200 to 300 dollars depending on where you go and a lot of people are doing it especially through summer so you don't have to apply mascara every day Again, if I wasn't reviewing mascara, I would probably do it. But if you wanna know more about it, just Google lift and tint in your area. All right, but let's zoom you in to see what the eyelashes look like minus any mascara. And on this side, we will go with the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect, $4.99. 
This has 4.2 stars on Ulta. It's cruelty-free, fragrance-free, oil-free, and provides, according to the website, provides length, volume, and a false lash effect. And I'm, I'm okay with that as long as it's not like that Miss Piggy false lash effect. You know what I'm talking about? We've all seen it. I've done it myself by mistake, putting on a really thick lash thinking it looked good only to look at pictures later and have one of those oh, crap moments. Yes, I've done it. All right, the light green one, by the way, is the regular formula. When you see this in the light blue, that is the waterproof formula. For today, I am testing the regular formula in both cases. And if you want a waterproof, there is one in both of these. I didn't want to test a waterproof one only because not everyone likes to wear waterproof mascara. I typically do for that lash coat of mascara just so that I don't have any transfer but we're gonna find out if these transfer or not because we're gonna check in in about eight hours and see if there is anything underneath my eyes. Now, what I do have underneath my eyes to help with that is my concealer and a very light dusting of powder just to ensure that this under eye area isn't too emollient or too soft with a serum because if you do have something more moist underneath your eyes, even a nice mascara can have a tendency to transfer and if you think about it, it's just because it's moist and there's a like a soft moisturizer there. And if you lay a mascara lined lash on top of something moist, of course, you're going to get some transfer. But we're going to see how well these do or do not transfer. So again, 4.2 stars. And I've reviewed this one before and you guys know this one came out in a really good review for me. So it's one that I keep around and I absolutely love it. As I age, I do apply my mascara a little bit more to how we should. And to do that, it requires me to slow down in the morning when I'm putting on my mascara and really concentrate on the way I'm doing it. Because typically I will just go in and start lining the lashes. And you know, when you're younger and you have a thick root at your lash, you can get away with that. But as I've aged and I don't have as many lashes creating that root line, I need to go in and falsely create one by taking my wand right to the base and wiggling it and then pulling it up so that you can really get a sense for the thickness of those roots and then individual lashes coming from that root line that helps define your eye. So that's the before and we are almost to the after. It goes on very creamy. You can see it's buildable. I'm not getting lumps from it. I like the fact that the wand allows me to hold it down here. This little green part is a rubber, so it does allow you to hold onto it and to grip it. And then you can see, here's what the wand looks like. It's your standard long but thin wand that allows you to get a nice area of your eye at once. And you can see I'm gonna go a little bit, not really two coats, but I am going to recoat everything once I've gone to the bottom and wiggled it. I mean, you can see just by that coat why this is such a popular mascara. I mean, that is very telling. Does it look like it provided length, volume, and a false lash effect? I would say absolutely, and that's with one coat. So we're gonna let this dry, and we will go over to its new member of the Essence family, and this is the Essence Lash Without Limits Extreme Lengthening and Volume Mascara. So while this one specifically says it provides length, volume, and a false lash effect, this one says it achieves extra long and voluminous lashes. So they say they do the same thing. They're the exact same price. You could go buy both, but in today's economy and with inflation, you don't need both. So which one do you really, well, let's not get crazy. You don't really need either of them. But if you're like me and you're a mascara hoarder of sorts, then maybe you do need both. But we're gonna find out today which one you really need. Comes in two shades. Actually, this comes in brown and black. This has 4.4 stars in its short life on the market. Um, it is also cruelty-free because it's essence. It is paraben-free and free of microplastic particles. Now I was a little concerned as to why they even felt the need to put that in the description. Maybe all mascaras are not, um, but this one is microplastics particle free. All right, in terms of holding this one, this one does not have the rubber grips. It is your standard mascara tube. It's very slim. Um, it's smooth across the top. 
And then the brush is the same size, although I would say that the, did I get brown? I got brown. No, I did get brown. Shoot. Well, we are gonna see what they look like. I mean, we can see the lengthening in the volume. Here's the difference in the brushes. Pretty much the same brush. The bristles are a little bit longer on the Lash Princess than they are on the Essence Lash Without Limits. I'm bummed, you guys. How did I not see that? I mean, <sighs> age, brain fog, all the things. So here is the before on this eye. And same thing, we're just gonna wiggle across the bottom. I can't believe I bought brown. It doesn't actually, it looks brown on the wand, but I can't say that it looks brown on my eye. Okay, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time going just like I, the brush is actually pretty easy to use. Um, I feel like it's a little softer right here at the bend part. I feel like it gives a little bit more. Yeah, it's pretty flexible. I don't know that I love that. Good thing I put a napkin there. I don't know that I love that, but um, I feel like that's a little bit too soft for me because if, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's a little harder to work with because of how much give is in that. You know, let's just see. So I, because of how soft that is, I feel like there's a little extra cleanup that you have to do and I'm not a big fan of that. Let's see if the original one is that soft. No, it's definitely stiff. So that is something to know, you guys. If you like this bend right here, to be more stiff like I do. I feel like I can control the application more precisely with the brush or the wand by holding it back here than with the softness that this one provides. Yeah, that is just way too bendy. This is almost like a brow. Are we sure this is for lashes? Yes, lash without limits. So far, I feel like this would be better off as a brow tint, but we're gonna continue. So that is what they both look like. So with one coat on each side, it's a, it's a no-brainer for me. I mean, I can see this already, but we'll go the whole eight hours to see which one we like better. Um, maybe this one will perform better in eight hours than the original The Lash Princess did. But so far that brush is a, it's a fail for me. Um, why would they do that? If you guys know in the, yeah. If anybody knows why they would have put that bendy part of that wand so flexible, I don't feel that I need it to be nearly that flexible. I prefer a stiffer um, application brush or wand so that I can go to all my lower lashes, but maybe some people like that. Now comparing the black mascara to the brown mascara, I don't really see that it looks brown to me. Does it look brown to you guys? I don't think it looks brown. I definitely don't think I like the look as well. It's a more natural look, let me say that. This one is a more natural look. So if that's what you're going for right out of the gate, then this might be an option if you don't mind that wand. Let's just cross contaminate though, because I do wanna see if, if, you've, if you love this mascara, but you have a better wand that you like, let's just see. No, that one does not stay in there, but you might have a wand. Good thing I'm the only one that uses all this mascara. Look at me doing cross-contaminating browns and blacks. You might have a different wand that you could fit in here if we end up loving the way this mascara holds. For $4.99, I'm happy with the way it looks. It is a more natural look. So I will be back in about eight hours and let's see what we've got. All right, you guys, so let's see what we've got. What we don't have is lip gloss. So my lips are a little dry after the long day. And a little bit of, what is this? This is the e.l.f. Um, Hydrating Core Lip Shine. I love this one. I keep it right here by my desk because it keeps my lips hydrated. All right, let's not talk lip gloss, let's talk mascara. When I looked in the mirror, let's see, I don't see any transfer. Now it has been eight and a half hours and I have my glasses on. I've been out, it was 65 degrees today. It was so nice. So I'm, I'm jonesing now for spring and I'm normally a winter person. So I'm really, I don't know, I'm just ready to get warm again. So I don't see any transfer on either side and they both still look like they have length and they both still look like they are more voluminous 
than they were before I applied them this morning. So by all accounts, I think they both held up really nicely. I do think the most distinct difference is, and the question for you to ask yourself if you are considering one of these two mascaras, is do you like a natural look or do you like a little bit more of a false look without a false lash? And for me, it really depends on what I'm doing that day. If I'm gonna wear a no makeup makeup day, then I want a little bit more of a natural look to my lashes. But on the normal, probably 90% of the time, I want a little bit more of a voomp to my lash without looking clumpy. Now I didn't mention earlier, and I should have, these are not, this is not a sponsored video. Essence didn't sponsor this. I purchased both of these mascaras myself at an Ulta down the street, but these are not tubing mascaras. I like a tubing mascara. So when I want a tubing mascara, you guys know the drill. I go with Thrive, Thrive Cosmetics, also not sponsored. Although Thrive Cosmetics, if you'd like to send me some mascara, that would be awesome. I would do them in giveaways because I would help share the love of how good that mascara is. But it is not always in my price point. Sometimes I don't wanna spend that much for mascara. I like a good mascara. And you guys look, for $5, $4.99 plus tax, if you have tax in your state, I think both of these are a very good mascara. So is there a winner in today's Friday face-off? For me, there definitely is. Is it the WOW Lash Without Limits? No, it is not. It is the Lash Princess, and let me tell you why. For me, I like a little bit more vavoom to my lashes, but I could tone the Lash Princess down by using just a little bit less of the product and get the same look. If I wanted to really ramp it up that day and have more dramatic lashes, I can add a second coat and a third coat. So I feel like this one is much more versatile. It will give me a natural look and it will give me a false lash look if that's my desired look that day for that overall makeup look. The other thing is this wand is really, to me, that is just, this makes such a mess when you go, if it just touches even a lash too aggressively, it bends and then you've got a mess. You might have saw I had to clean up on the inner side of my nose. So I don't know why they would have done that. I don't mind that it was brown. Quite frankly, I think it looks just almost as dark as the black. So that wasn't a deciding factor for me. It's really that wand and how bendy it is. Uh, if you're like me and you like to put on your makeup quickly, the formula of the product is important, how long the product lasts is important, but the tools to apply the product are equally as important, especially when I'm, when I'm on speed racer mode. So that was a fail for me because of the wand for sure. The formula is okay. I think you can achieve the same look with this mascara. So for me, Here's our clear winner for today's Friday face-off. I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me put in another Friday face-off. And I would love for you to share this video with any and all of your friends that love mascara as much as we do. That does it for me today, you guys. I'll see you in just a couple days. Bye-bye.